we continue to use the session launch path to create the sessions that we're going to use to generate the load. As we already have one session, I'm just going to put in another four and just give them a two second delay before each subsequent session starts. So what we'll see shortly is Launchpad will start to create extra sessions. So we'll see that the username and password are automatically entered. We see the Citrix splash screen. And if we open up the Winload console, we then start to see the agents register with the console. So we can see the first agent, which is what we've been using to record the script, already has a script WordPad 2 associated with it. And as subsequent agents open, as they, as they launch, they automatically launch inside each session, we'll see them register with the console. Because we're using a the Citrix Zen app published EC2 image, uh, it's coming up with a, um, a splash screen saying this is a trial version. That's fine, it just disappears on its own automatically. And once all the sessions are open, we're ready to start generating some load against our application. Okay, so that's all our agents available and ready. The status is ready. So what we're going to do is set them all to run the same script in this case. So I'm going to highlight all of them and right click and select Agent Properties. And the script we want them to run is WordPad 2 and it's automatically come up with countries.txt as the input file again I'm going to select a random search so it should put in a random country each time we ask it to entry, enter a country. Let's tell each agent to run 10 loops of that script and then we're finished with the configuration box, the properties box. So what's happening now is the script is being sent across to each agent along with the input text file. These agents don't necessarily need to be running on the same machine, they can be on any machine, either a Citrix server, remote desktop server, physical desktop machine. As long as you've got IP connectivity to them, then you can use them. So one more thing before I launch this test is to open up uh, Quotium Center. And in Quotium Center I've already configured a job which is going to monitor the operating system of the target machine and Winload itself. The benefit of using Quotium Center, of course, is that we can then correlate response time and number of active users with resources such as CPU utilization, memory usage, etc. So I'm going to run my job for Quotium Center before I start the scenario from the console. So hitting the play button with all the agents selected that I want to run and then prompted with a launch delay which is going to stagger the launch of each user. I'll just set that to five seconds and hit OK. And what we'll see is the status changes from playing from pending to playing. And if we actually look at the launch pad, we can see the users start to run. So user one has started and it's uh, it's entered in Romania, it's saving the the file. User two is now entering Panama and you can see user 3, 4 and 5 are all running. Because I'm only running 5 users here, typically you can get around 50 users on a server as an injector. If you need to run more than that then of course you can add extra injectors. So let's take a look back at the console. We can see they're all running and you can see the loop number that they're on. So let's go into Quotium Center and see what information we can get. So I go into the results tab and let's take a look at uh, Winload and look at the overview so there are our sessions and here are the transactions that we're running and if we want to get some more detail on there we can take a look at playback time and let's look at current response time and all I'm really interested in is first of all launch and secondly I'm interested in save so I'm going to drag and drop on the save transaction and we should get a, another line there. We can take a look at the um, Windows monitor if we look at the operating system overview we can see that actually it's quite busy even with just five users on. Now this is a small footprint uh, Amazon EC2 instance and also consider that we're using this as a self-contained test rig and target which you would probably never do in a real test. In a real test you would usually have a target machine separate to the test rig. Flicking back to the uh, response time we can then add on for example CPU time Let's take a look at privileged CPU time and drag that and drop it onto our graph. Let's just look at the uh, total value even though there's only one CPU. We'll choose the processor and set that to use the right axis. 
So we can see our CPU is affected by the amount of load that we got on the system and you can see that there's a relationship there between response time and CPU time. So we leave that running and if we take a look at Launchpad we can see that the users are still running along and if we take a look at the console they're actually on the final loop. So the status should then change back to ready which it does and then finally what I want to do is to log them all off so I'm going to right click my highlighted block and I'm going to run a command and it's actually a Windows command line prompt that this is going to enter into and I'm going to tell them to log off so that should close my Citrix sessions and as we can see Launchpad is now becoming empty as the sessions close up okay so now we have our results in Quotium Center we can stop the monitoring and the next thing that we can do is take a look at our results and the job that we just ran just now everything is stored in the results folder we can run a uh, anomaly detection so if we choose Windows 2003 for example we can see there were 16 severity 3 anomalies disk transfer time was potentially a problem the severity 1 is actually a, a lower severity anomaly nonetheless it is a warning and it's saying down here that the system congestion is the process queue length divided by the number of CPUs and the process queue length is greater than 10 threads per processor it's also flagged up an issue with memory page faults if we scroll down we can see a description of what a memory page fault is and also what the impact can be. We can see here that hard faults which require disk access can cause significant delays. And finally we have the option to generate a report and there's another video detailing the report and the report template designer which you can find on the website. Finally thank you very much for watching and if you'd like to get in touch with us our website is www.quotium.com or you can contact us using the details in the lower left of the screen or via the website.